How many is ready for God's word this morning? I've, I've got a message in my heart. The kingdom of God. Two things you should know. Two things you need to know about the kingdom of God. Stand to your feet. And I want to read out of Romans chapter 14. And I want to read the New King James Version first. Then we'll go back and we'll look at it through the Passion Translation. Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. Now let's look at it in the Passion Translation. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules about food and drink, but it is in the realm, somebody say realm, of Holy Spirit filled with righteousness, peace, and joy. The kingdom of God is is not about a matter of rules about food and drink. They're having an argument right now. Some are kosher, some are not. Some are gathering on the Sabbath. They're fussing and fighting about which day is the Sabbath day. They're fussing and fighting about the rules and the ceremony of it all. And, and, and Paul is writing, and he says, hey, let me help you with something. The kingdom of God is not about a matter of rules about what we're eating and drinking. It's in the realm of Holy Spirit. And in that realm, there is righteousness, peace, and joy. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. Holy Spirit, I'm relying 100% upon you to open my eyes for me to see and my ears for me to hear your counsel for the remainder of our time together today. In Yeshua's name we pray and everyone shouted amen. amen and amen and amen. As you're being seated, lean over to your neighbor and just tell him you're looking as good as you can today. <laughs> now tell him, said, if it wasn't for you, tell him, if it wasn't for you, I'd be the best looking person here today. Some of y'all are enjoying that way too much. <laughs> Kingdom, Basileia in the Greek. It means the authority to rule. The authority. It is domain. King's territory. The Basileia is not a matter of rules about food and drink. We're getting hung up on legalistic things. Here is what the kingdom is. It is a realm of... That we enter through Holy Spirit. We are quickly approaching the, the Feast of Pentecost, or what we would call the Day of Pentecost. Uh, I'm going to freak you out. You ready? Pentecost. Here's what it means in the Greek. Penta, 50. Ooh, holy rollers, ain't we? 50 days after Passover is the Feast of Pentecost. It's a harvest Pentecost. Okay, so this is a promise where uh, John said, Yeshua is coming. There's one coming who is greater than me. I baptize you in, into repentance. I am not him, but there is one who is coming. I am baptizing you into repentance. But when he comes, he's going to baptize you into Holy Spirit and fire. So not only will, uh, when we said yes to Yeshua, uh, when we said yes to Jesus and we said forgive us of our sin and he did come in make us new uh, then what happened when we said yes Holy Spirit moved into us and whether you know it or not Holy Spirit brought all the toys when he came all of the gifts we got the gift of Holy Spirit and then he brought all the spiritual gifts with him amen 
And so the only way that we access this realm of the kingdom is through Holy Spirit. So I'm going to ask you a question. This is just hit me right now. Uh, do you believe that you have Holy Spirit living inside of you? If you do, let me hear you say amen. amen. Okay, so let me ask you this. Uh, do you believe that, that, that uh, you have Holy Spirit? Say yes. Here's the next question. Does Holy Spirit have you? Yes, we have Holy Spirit, but does Holy Spirit have us? Are, are we literally surrendered to the breath of God where he is total Lordship? This word spirit is the word pneuma in the Greek. And if you go down, if you dig a little bit deeper down to about definition number five, it says the breath through the nostrils or the mouth? Are we living face to face in our prayer life and in our daily walk uh, in him? I, I used to say we're walking with him. I don't believe we are walking with the Lord anymore. I believe we are walking in the Lord and he is in us and we access through prayer face to face with his heart and with him. And when he breathes on us, that breath through the nostrils and the mouth, Holy Spirit begins to move us and blow us into the direction of the life that we are to be leading, manifesting things that are connected to righteousness. What is righteousness? My whole life, righteousness has been right standing with God. May I encourage you that it's even deeper than right standing with God. It is right relationship with God that produces right standing. Right relationship with Father is when you blow it, you don't you don't disappear from his presence. You don't do the Adamic thing and hide behind the fig leaves of excuse. The Adam thing. When you make a mistake, you don't disqualify yourself from his presence. Hear me. Sin changed Adam. It didn't change God. God still showed up for the walk. Even when Adam blew it. Adam, where are you? He knew he was hiding in the figs. That wasn't the question. The question is, how come you've given away? I had you seated in a seat of authority. You were here, and now you're not. Lucifer's here now. Where are you, Adam? He's hiding behind him. Adam fell into the deception that because of his choices, he disqualified himself from even getting close to his father. And so what God decided to do through Yeshua, and I love this, God decided to smuggle himself into humanity and blow it up from the inside out. And Yeshua came not to tell God how good people are, but to tell man how good God is. Everything is in Yeshua. Everything is in Jesus. This is all about Jesus. From this moment to the days of my uh, death, and I don't think I'll see death, by the way, uh, but if I should, they're going to plant me in the backyard and maybe on my headstone just going to say, it's all about Jesus. We're going to preach a message that sounds like Jesus, that looks like Jesus, that draws people to the Father through the love of Jesus, through the mercy of Jesus, through the grace of Jesus. Jesus is the kingdom personified. He is love personified. He is mercy personified. He is grace personified. He is forgiveness personified. Everything we need to know about the Father is in Jesus. Jesus looks like his Father, and Tony's supposed to look like Jesus. Righteousness, not only right standing, but right relationship with the Father that produces right standing. I don't wake up every day struggling with sin. Stop saying you're only human. You are not. <laughs> sin no longer has dominion over me. Why? Because in Yeshua, there is dominion. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Sin is an outward uh, 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 influence. Do you dare think sin can penetrate through the love and the grace and the mercy of God? See, when you live here, Holy Spirit's breathing. What's he breathing? The Word of God. See, when you live right here, everybody put your hand like this. 
in front of you. Put it as far as... Now, can you see anything around you right now? You want to get rid of distraction? Look at me. Okay. You want to get rid of distraction? Get this close, face to face, which is what worship is. Face to face to where Holy Spirit can just breathe. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. The breath of God. Holy Spirit. That's what Spirit is. We've made, we've made Holy Spirit. Yes, He is the third person of the Trinity. Yes, but we've made Him somehow some sort of spooky thing that we don't want to embrace. And especially, uh, I know some charismatics, uh, charismatics who have perverted a thing and they've done a thing. This is the most beautiful gift we could ever have in our life is when we said yes to Yeshua. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you like orphans, but I'm going to send you another. In the Greek, it means an exact duplicate of the same kind. I am going to be in Holy Spirit, and not only will he settle upon you, but he is moving in you. And these are the sons of God, these who are hearing and obeying Holy Spirit, we are blown. I believe the book of Romans says the mature believer is the one who is blown by the impulses of the spirit wind, pneuma, Holy Spirit wind. My t-shirt came from there that says blow, spirit wind, blow, because I want to be right here. This eliminates distraction. I don't see you. John Cena's in the room. You can't see me. Down, 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 down. That's for my little boy who will watch us later. Right? So we have righteousness. Not only right standing with God, but the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules about what we're eating and drinking and all the legalistic stuff. But this is about, do you understand right standing? Yes. But what about right relationship? So that if you do fall, and that's a big if, you learn how to fall forward, not away from. Relationship with Father looks like this. Religion says, I blew it. My dad's going to kill me. Relationship with God, right relationship is, I blew it. I got to talk to my dad. That's right relationship. Right relationship is, yes, I had a moment. And all sin is in the life of the believer is that area in us that we haven't uh, adequately, adequately explained to that area that that is not who I am any longer. You no longer have dominion over me, and I will not give in to this part of my life. It is full surrender, everything in my life, the good, the bad, the ugly. I live a total in surrendered life. And when that thing rises up, it's just an indicator that I need to release grace and life and over that thing and just move it on out of me and just move on, period. That's what sin is. If you're still dealing with sin, you haven't taken authority over it yet. And I'm not talking about, in the name of Jesus, come out. No, I am simply saying, that's not a part of my identity. I will no longer give in to that in my life. I am a son of God who hears his voice, who operates in his authority and walks in his favor. And that thing is out of alignment with God's original blueprint and design for my life. So I will no longer give it any time at all. Righteousness. You're in the realm of Holy Spirit. And we have this right relationship with God that's producing right standing. Righteousness. But there's more. The kingdom of God is peace. This word is not shalom. This word in the Greek means not at war it means contentment it means tranquility <laughs> so we have this right relationship with god 
that's producing right standing, but it's also pre producing peaceful tranquility where we're not at war with everything and everyone. We've been delivered from all of that nonsense. You know somebody that, you ever, you ever met somebody that's just a negative Nelly or a negative Ned? Isn't that really difficult to hang around for any period of time? You know what I want to do with people like that? I just want to shake them till all the negatives gone, but I'd still be shaking. I just want to come out, come out, come out, come out. But you know what has to happen with them? They have to have that righteous conversation with that thing that is disturbing their peace. And they have to declare that that's not who I am. Because who I am says that not only am I in right relationship with God, but I have right standing with him. And even when I blow it, it doesn't disturb my peace. There's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Some of us are living in self-inflicted condemnation. Condemnation is uh, sentencing with no hope of being forgiven. Forgiven. Conviction, the Bible says that God convicts those that he loves. He said, well, you're in the wrong seat. That ain't who you are. That ain't who I created you to be. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for correcting me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me that I am out of my section. I'm over here in the reservation section, but I choose to be walking, and for whatever reason, I'm just out of sync with the original design of my life. And here's the thing. Righteousness produces peace. If you have people around you that are constantly creating havoc and war, move away from them. In Jesus' name. I don't care if they are your relatives. I'll let that simmer down. And pray that they get a righteous revelation. I know a lot of church people who think they're in right standing, and they might be, but they don't understand right relationship. And because they don't understand right relationship, they have put themselves in a spiritual timeout, and they're beating themselves up over stupid stuff that they're dealing with for the past 20 years. Get over it, girl. Move on, bro. The Bible says that this realm that we enter through Holy Spirit is full of right standing, right relationship, this peaceful tranquility with no war. Do you notice what's happening? All of this stuff is happening within me. It's not talking about my circumstances outside of what's going on. Is there war in the earth? Yeah, but it don't have to be in me. You know what keeps a boat afloat? No water gets in. You know what makes a boat sink? Its environment gets in. Storms on the outside somehow made it in the vessel. A real good way to let somebody disturb the peace in your life is to let them do it. You can have that for free. It didn't cost you nothing. Don't let them do it. Don't let them do it. My eight-year-old needs boundaries. But some, so do some 38-year-olds and 58-year-olds and 88-year-olds. You don't get my peace. I get to guard my peace. And if you're disturbing my peace, done. Let the peace of God rule your heart, right? Well, how's that happen? My grandma used to say, we got to get the mind of God on that. You know what she was saying? Let's just get into our prayer closet and do this. Holy Spirit's breathing, moving. That's what spirit is, pneuma. Now, it could be this impersonal wind, but this not is what I'm talking That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about things that, winds of doctrine that cause us to be blown about. 
in every direction. I'm talking about this personal one-on-one -on -one, face to face relationship where I'm close enough to hear him go and I receive the instruction I receive the details I don't know what I'm supposed to do get right here and that's gonna eliminate a lot of the stuff you're looking at Holy Spirit did a great work in me while I was in Georgia I've been dealing with some things leadership gets under attack in areas you don't even know about it starts with our mindset we start looking inward. Well, I decided instead of looking inward at some of the things that I'm that 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 old that old song says, He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth, Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. Cause he's still working on me. Yay. every day and if I'm not careful I can shift and see the things that I'm still growing through I'm not going through anything I am a victor not a victim and Holy Spirit has been lovingly teaching me how to talk I used to say things like it's my responsibility to take care of my family and I get that in the earth realm, you would think so, but it's actually his responsibility to take care of me so that I can take care of my family. Because so if I look inward to that, I'm chasing everything that shines. And because Kara and I had this wonderful conversation, and, and my, my wife, y'all, look, 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 look. We got to get to a place where we can go minister together because this woman's a genius. And I honor first lady of this house. No stinking doubt about it. She said, you, she said, you know why you chase things that shine? We have honest conversations. You should try it. It's really good. I'm like, why? She said, because when you were little, your mama took all your money to pay mortgages since I was 16, working part-time at McDonald's. I'd work, make $250 every two weeks, get $25 out of my check every two weeks my mama took it and paid bills me and my brother both we so poor we couldn't pay attention and since I was 16 I've been working for not enough not enough not enough and in those early development years listen to me gentlemen your brain ain't fully developed till you hit 30 stop that's why your wife's raising both you and your kids Yeah, someone just said, preach. It was a woman said that. <laughs> and because that became a developmental thing in my brain, guess what? I could have $10 million in the bank, be totally debt-free, and it's not enough. I'm still looking for more. Because there might come a time. There might come a time. There might come a So guess what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to crucify that sacred cow to where I can be like Paul. It says, I know what it's like to be content when I have a lot and when I don't have any. I am just going to be content. He said the word abased and abound and, 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 and for the KJV people in the room. But what he was saying was, I have learned to be content where I am. I'm going to be satisfied because my source is Yahweh. And that's why I chase things, look at things. Because there's something in me that I have to fully surrender that what if syndrome. Anybody ever gone future tripping? What if the money runs out? What if you, you fill in the blanks? What if the cancer comes back? Oh, I'm preaching really, really good. But you know what those things are designed to do? Sure, you have right standing. And, and, and you may even have right relationship. Those things are designed to disturb the peace. Maybe I should have called this message disturbing the peace. Because once you start getting into self-effort of any kind, because righteousness is not about self-effort. Righteousness is this. He who knew no sin became sin so that you and I could become 
in right relationship with God, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what your Bible declares. We are in right standing, right relationship that produces right standing and also produces peace where you're not at war with everything, including yourself. Anybody in the room tend to overthink stuff? Any planners in the room? Me and Kara's already got our summer book. She ain't even on break yet. We're planners, baby. And when things come and disrupt our plans, wow, havoc comes. But this peace, because I'm in this mindset that I'm living full surrender, and I'm living, listen, to the prompting or the gentleness, the blowing of the spirit wind. I have to learn to stay here so I don't have to learn to look there. Is this good? Almost done. Don't endure till the end. Stay with me here. I don't want you enduring. I want you letting this down in your soul, man. This is good food. So we have righteousness, we have peace, and we have joy. You know what joy is in the Greek? Joy. <laughs> Y'all say joy. Now say this. It's Greek to me. Where? So it says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules about food and drink, but is in the realm of the Holy Spirit. Your door to righteousness, peace, and joy is in Holy Spirit. I said, how many of y'all believe that you have Holy Spirit? Everybody said, yay, Holy Spirit moved in. But how many believe in this room that Holy Spirit has you? Because if Holy Spirit has you, then guess what? You're entering into a kingdom realm that is only accessed by full surrender to Holy Spirit. That's what it is. Uh, can we look at this verse in the King James uh, the New King James Version. I want to I, I show you the New King James. But then we're going to go one more verse, one more verse, and then we're going to wrap this up. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in holy pneuma, in the holy breath of God, in Holy Spirit. So we're in Holy Spirit. Watch this. The Pharisees are asking Jesus, who's constantly talking about the kingdom. The first message Jesus ever preached after coming back from the wilderness was repent for the kingdom is at hand. The Pharisees hated Jesus. Where is your kingdom? Where is your kingdom? They just kept pressing him, pressing him, pressing him. Where is the kingdom of God? Look over at Luke. I'm going to show you something. How many want to know where the kingdom of God is? Wave at me like this. You want to know where the kingdom of God is? Look over here at Luke chapter 17, verse 21. This is the New King, uh, King James Version. Nor will they say, see here. Uh, no, uh, are we there? Yeah, we're there. Or see there. See here or see there. For indeed, you ready? The kingdom of God is within you. <laughs> Y'all just can't wait to die and go to heaven. The kingdom is right in you right now, y'all. Come on. Eternity has already started. We're in this part of eternity. And literally, slipping into the next part is just to go from here to here, and now we're in the other part. We're just transitioning. Look, when God, uh, can I say it, Holy Ghost? Okay, great. Watch this. Watch this. Kara, can you come up here for just two seconds uh, and, and bring up, uh, um, 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 let me have one of your, your, uh, your ribbons, Miss Robin, that, that you were dancing with. Hurry, 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 hurry. Come up here real quick, baby girl. Amen. Oh, this is so good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, a talit or whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, so this is my bride literally right and 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 so uh, what happens for a bride as she's walking down the aisle I want to I want to show you this uh, as soon as Robin comes this, this is beautiful uh, oh, oh okay all right all right 
Okay, okay, yeah, okay, so we got that. Okay, very good, very good. All right, so this is, this is what's happening uh, to um, a bride, right? So you just stay there. I'm going to cover you up. Okay. This is lacy, right? It's, it, and it's real pretty. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll take this. I'll take this. Watch. Now, if she, if this was a veil, if this was a veil, she could see. Any women in the room, you wore a veil when you were coming down the aisle, you saw in part. Right? But watch this. The groom does not see in part his bride. The bride's perspective of the groom is in part. <laughs> you with me? So this is what happens when we get face to face. What happened in your wedding? Step this way. Right here. Watch. What happened during the wedding? The groom could have done this, but that's not what he did. You think, because he already sees you. He was lifting the veil not for him to get a better look at you, but so that you could see. And here's what the groom is after. This is what the groom is after because what you see now is in part. <laughs> what I'm doing in the kingdom world right now through Holy Spirit is I am lifting the veil so you understand that you're in right relationship with me and because you're in right relationship that gives you right standing you have peace like you've never known that peace will pass your understanding not only do you have right standing and right relationship with me but you also have peace and you also have joy and I'm just going to stay just like this so if you'll just focus on me every day of your life when I breathe on you you will know where we're going you won't have time you won't have desire to look at any other thing except me in your life because the veil has been lifted and the father desires do you see it the father no 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 now look that way no 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 hey baby girl right here <laughs> now look that way look at okay we're going to call that financial trouble look over there no 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 right here. We're going to call that health issues. No, 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 no. Right here, right here, right here. Dude, and the only way you block out anything in your peripheral vision is just to get close. Mm -hmm. And see, I don't want to yell at you. Father won't yell at you. Mm -hmm. But I just want to release something. Mm -hmm. And you got to be close. And see, you don't even see anything anymore. And now when that rises up, it don't matter because you're here. Mm -hmm. When that rises up, it don't matter because you're here. Mm -hmm. The veil has been lifted. Your groom has seen you as you are, but now you see him as he is. And it's all about intimacy. It's not even about sex. It's about intimacy. And I want you to know me. And I want you to love me and know that you are loved and well-pleasing. And I, Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? And when you fully understand that, you will live face to face. And when stuff pops up, you won't forget who you're married to. powerful powerful so the veil that's being lifted once we saw through a glass darkly but for those of us who are kingdom minded the bride is not ripping off the veil the closer we get to the groom he starts to raise the veil until we this is so good and all of this is within us all of this is within us isn't that good it is. amen Woo! girl you better go sit down or I'm gonna kiss you again and now we throw the party nobody even has to be invited to this dance because we're so close to him it don't matter if you dance or not that's why praise and worship is so important that's why, hey, look, praise and worship team, if you're performing and it, the, and it bothers you that they're not bouncing off, of the, uh, off, the, off the ceiling when you're singing and all that, if that bothers you, you're not close enough. 
you're not close enough because I want you to, all of us in this room to get to a place where we are just living and loving so close that I can't even see my neighbor. I'm not even concerned if they're worshiping or not because all I want is for the Father to continue to lift the veil where I can see more and see more and see because what we behold, we start to believe and what we are believing, we start to become and only after becoming, we start to behave in a way that is bride-like, kingdom-like. God, Jesus is not coming back for some harlot who's been beat up by the adversary. He's coming back for a bride. You remember in the Bible they said, hey, didn't we cast out demons in your name? And he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Why? Why did he say depart? Because I never knew you. Yes, the power is in the name of Jesus. They even told uh, the sons of Sceva said, we cast out demons in the name of, the, of Jesus that Paul saw. And the demons said, yeah, we know this Jesus and we're getting to know Paul, but who are you? And those demons beat up those sons of Sceva, stripped them down naked, sent them home to mama crying and bruised and naked. And it, it, the power is in the name of Yeshua. But Jesus said, I'm going to give you that power and, and, and you're going to be deputized to use my name. But what I'm after is not your performance based and you going out laying hands on the sick and never cover. All that's going to happen. But I want your eyes. I want your heart. I want your intimacy. And those who said, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we heal the sick in your name? Why did he cast them away? Because I never knew you. That word new is a, is a uh, Hebrew uh, idiom for sexual encounter or intimacy. I cast out demons in your name. I, I don't know you. Oh, the power's in the name of Jesus. Do you know you don't even have to be saved to use biblical principles concerning giving? And it'll work in your life. Because it ain't about the one utilizing the principle, it's about the principle. Oh, lift the veil, Holy Ghost. Get us so close that even our children see a difference. Get us so close. I don't know about you, but sometimes I love Drew. He's just like me, and that bothers me. He's hard-headed. He knows what he wants. Hearing no is not a part of his ability to comprehend. And I love that about him, but then I don't. And sometimes, you know what I'm learning to do? You know what I'm learning to do? I'm not willing to surrender my peace. My labor is to remain at rest in what he has done. And do you know what Father has started doing? Father has started giving me creative ideas, uncommon solutions to common problems. He starts giving me access and favor. Do you know what the, do you know why people, who, do you know the people who struggle the most with the prosperity gospel are people who are broke and sick? You know what the prosperity gospel is? Are you ready? Jesus in his fullness. It's the Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O, and it means forgiven in your sin, forgiven not in your sin, from your sin. You know, sin no longer has dominion over you. Jesus eradicated sin in the life of a believer. Healed in your body, Jesus. Is that you? Jesus? Hello? Hola, como estas? Operator, please connect me. Okay. Anyway, what was I saying? So, so, forgiven of our sin, healed in our body, delivered in our mindset, and made whole in every area of our life. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, for it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the dunamis, the power dunamis in the Greek. It's where we get our English word dynamite. It's this explosive ability of God to not only forgive me, but to heal my body, to deliver me in my mindset, and to make me whole in every area of my life.
Sozo is the next step beyond shalom. It's even more powerful than shalom. It means peace. Right? So, here's the prosperity gospel. You ready? Health, wealth, influence. Why would you argue with that? You want to be sick? You want to be poor? You know what poe is, right? I mean, it's so poe you can't pay attention. Do you not want to have influence? You don't want to live in favor? As long as you make prosperity about money, you'll be warped. It ain't just about that. The kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the breath of God. And it fills our lungs. Constantly, God's constantly breathing in the dirt just like he did Adam. And he's raising us up. And now because he is seated, we are seated in him. We are above only. And not, but this is the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom. Blues despair and agony on me ain't a part of our theme song anymore. Anything that looks to Jesus and says, I'm waiting for you to move a mountain. He goes, next, because it ain't up to me anymore. I gave you the authority to move that mountain. I'm waiting for you. Father God, I'm just going to wait on the Lord. And the Lord says, you're up. Waiting on the Lord has become the Christian cop-out. Let me pray about it. You ain't going to pray about it because you don't want to do it. Oh, I'm reading your mail. Some of y'all have been praying about a ministry thing for 20 years. And then the other part of you goes, can you imagine if I was just done that 20 years ago? We are not running out of money. We're not running out of property. We're not running out of anything in the earth realm to advance the kingdom. We're running out of time. And I believe, like I believe I'm breathing this air that I'm breathing right now, that I and this church and everyone in it, we are a part of the advanced team that's been sent to the earth realm for such a time as this so that we can prepare it for the coming of our king. Because all of creation is standing on their tippy toes. And it's waiting for the sons and daughters take our place walk in authority talk the authority live this authority Holy Spirit said many people want a public manifestation of all of the gifts and all of the things that that the kingdom has to offer but very few have ever had a private encounter with me and Holy Spirit told me he said I cannot fill their streets until they allow me to fill their house How many believe Holy Spirit moved into you and you have Holy Spirit when you got saved? Waved at me like this. So you believe you have Holy Spirit. Let me ask you this question. Does Holy Spirit have you? You want to tap into righteousness and peace and joy? Surrender fully to Holy Spirit. Come on, let's make worship more than about four or five songs in the morning and 30 minutes of killing time. But why don't we do this be be before we do anything? leaders especially we should be the first worshipers if nobody else is worshiping leaders must be the I will be the first worshiper I will be the first worshiper it's not about my singing or my performance I must be the worshiper I'm going to worship in my house I'm going to worship in my car I'm going to worship on the golf course or the ballpark I'm going to worship on this platform sitting in the uh, pew I'm going to worship in the bathroom wherever I am may I be the first worshiper may I have access into this realm of of righteousness peace and joy because literally that realm is not 300 billion light years away it is literally from here to here through the veil in this good amen lift your hands all over this room say father God I surrender breathe in deep and just say speak Holy Ghost Wind, listen, 
creation, listen to the power that's coming from my mouth. In the name of Jesus, I bless you this day. In the name of Jesus, that you find favor among men and women in position to bless you. That you find health. That you find revenue streams. That you find relational favor. Relationships with your children. Family, spouses that have been beat up and bruised, that we speak restoration in life over all of those things. In the name of Yeshua, be blessed in the city and in the field. Everything your hands touch, blessed. Be ye the head and not the tail. Be above only and not beneath in any area of your life. In the name of Yeshua. And if you receive it, shout it out loud. I receive it. We're not going to close because I'm not done. But I'm going to quit. I could talk about this until the day of my old, 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 old age. Get back here next week. We may conclude this. But I feel like something shifted in the atmosphere. Do you feel it? You sense it? I was sitting yesterday in a Latino barbershop. Everything in that barbershop, the music they were playing, something stirred in my spirit. And I asked the owner of the shop, I said, what's this music? It is Christian music, but it was in Spanish. And I'm like, Something in my spirit, man, just found agreement with this. See, they were singing in tongues. That's the English word, that's the Greek word glossa that happened on the day of Pentecost. And these ordinary men were speaking the language of 14, 15, 16 different nationalities in the street that day. And they all heard about the wonders of God in their own language. That was not the angel's language. That was not the uncommon, or uh, the, uh, the unknown ang- uh, language of angels. That was glossa. And I'm sitting there, and tongues was hitting my spirit. They were, I started listening, and it was Yeshua, Yehu, yes. They were just, oh, they were just, worshiping the Lord and I heard this I heard this woman yeah and I'm like oh I'm about to come out of here the guy comes to me he said you're a preacher I said I am I'm a pastor of a church he said where I said I pastor my church yes we have a church in Edinburgh Hispanic church we want to buy our church we need resources we have money we need someone to give us the rest I said you have your phone with you he said, yeah, and I pulled up my contact at Share Financial. See, my boy was there getting a haircut, but I was there on a kingdom assignment. My God, I feel this in my, because wherever you go, everything is an opportunity. And I started giving him all of my contact information for Share Financial, who helped us buy this church. And he said, oh, this was divine. I'm like, you don't even know, bro. I don't know how to say that in Spanish. My little eight-year-old in there getting a haircut in a shop we'd never been in. I just happened to be driving by it there at Stony Point. You know what I'm talking about, where we used to have church? Right up the, in there. I, I don't even, let, Latina, some, Latino, I don't remember. But it didn't matter. Drew got a haircut, and I got an assignment. And guess what I believe with all my heart, prophetically speaking, That Hispanic ministry is going to be able to buy their building in Edinburgh because of a kingdom guy being directed by the blowing of the spirit wind. Turn in there. Get his hair cut there. They're the only barbershop opened in Strasbourg yesterday. No such thing. There is no Greek or Hebrew word for coincidence in Scripture. But these are the sons and the daughters of God 
who are moved by the unction of the blowing of the spirit wind. That day, I was an answer to a preacher's prayer who needed to find church financing. He said, do they do churches? I said, that's all they do. Oh, this is divine. You don't even know. Find a place to bless somebody today. Today, in this moment. Live in the favor of God. You know that's F-O-G, right? Neck, when you're driving across that river going into D.C. and it's all foggy, just lift your hand. I mean, not when you're driving. And just say, I thank God that I'm driving in the favor of God. The F-O-G. I love living in the fog. Amen. I don't know if I agree with that. I'm so close to this right now. All I hear and all I see is him and his breath. <sighs> Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is the kingdom. Be blessed. Thank you for coming. We'll see you next week.